Good morning, Faith Presbyterian Church. We are happy you are here worshiping with us online today. We are live and with you, hopefully, in your, uh, in your homes. We, uh, again, uh, have made the decision to uh, close the sanctuary, as you know, uh, due to the COVID outbreak again in our community, just to keep you safe. We're probably erring on the side of, uh, of safety, so uh, shame on us for that. But uh, we want to keep you safe, we want to keep you with us, and we want to keep you worshiping. So join us this morning as we begin in song. I touched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise of treasures with faith are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. Here in your love Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you Lord, there's nothing Nothing is better than you And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better with us this morning. We hope that you're singing along, and we hope that you enjoy this praise that we offer to our God this morning. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. 
drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever. The power Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you uh, are praising with us this morning from the safety of your home. We are glad that you are here, and we pray that God is keeping you safe and well and glorified this morning. It is such a beautiful day outside today, and if ever you wondered about God's creation, you don't have to look far by looking out and seeing the beautiful colors of the trees that are turning in this fall season. This morning, your call to worship is, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. That comes from Psalms 9, 1 through 2. Join us again as we continue in song. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Good, good father, 
you worship team. What a great job this morning. Great praise to our Lord and Savior. This morning at this time is our opportunity to come to God in a prayer of confession. It is in our confession where we realize our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. It is in admitting the truth of our lives that we take the first step toward wholeness and healing. So let us make our confession first in silent prayer together. Join me in silent prayer. Our assurance of forgiveness for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. May God bless the reading of his word. Huh? 
I feel like I just left part of a Disney movie with that beautiful vocal number by uh, Jen. Thank you, Jen, this morning. What a blessing that we got from that. 
If you didn't get a blessing from that song this morning, I believe your blesser is broke and we need to talk. This morning's message uh, comes to you. Obviously, you know by now that we have an almost empty sanctuary this morning except for a wonderful crew of, of video folks that are up in the top here and people working the sound and our great accompanist and vocalist this morning. And there's others that have put together this service this morning, so I thank them all. It's my challenge for all of you who are listening that you do not succumb to the potential negative effects of our isolation, but instead embrace the discipline to maintain or possibly develop a new consistency for Christ. What I mean by that is not only do we have an obligation to gather in corporate worship together, but we need consistency in being fed with Christ's teachings, music, and praise intended to glorify him. Don't allow the coronavirus or anything else in your life to limit your good habits for taking time to make church and God involvement a priority. Let's begin in prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful day that we could, we could gather together in corporate worship. It's not how we want to gather. We miss our neighbors. We miss our congregation gathering. The smiles, well, I guess we can't see the smiles because everybody's covered up by a mask, but you get my drift. We thank you for the opportunity of technology that allows us to worship together. We pray this in your name that you bless this service and the words that are heard this morning, for it's in Christ's name. Amen. As we prepare for Thanksgiving later in the month, I'm starting a new series entitled The Psalms of Thanksgiving. This week we will be starting with God's mercy. Our scripture passage this morning is taken from Psalms 107. Let's begin by reading God's word this morning. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. And then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. And then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress he brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. This morning, the key takeaway that I would like you to think about is that God's mercy is cause for thanksgiving. And when we cry out to him, he can restore us even when our troubles are the result of our own sin. I've had quite a week since being here last Sunday. I went on a whirlwind trip to care for an ailing aunt, and the week has developed over and over again. And I think this message in my heart was intended for the situation that I found myself in this week. And I think you'll understand as we go along through the sermon this morning. 
The key idea in this passage that I just read is that God is willing to restore those who call on him even through a variety of circumstances. There was wandering, there was self-inflicted pain and rebellion in this case. There is a relational aspect. God continues to help people only after they have acknowledged their circumstance and called upon his name. We have a God who expects us to call on him and ask for his help. There's no room for pride or self-help. His faithfulness and loyalty to his people is displayed in the three different situations in this portion of the passage. To one bound by the enemy, the wanderer, and the rebel. Even though there are times when the Lord allows us to suffer the consequences of our own sins, for example, David's sin involving Bathsheba, we can find comfort in knowing that God's mercy still can extend to the depths of our own issues, namely our sin. The thankfulness we bestow upon the Lord is not due just to his action of delivering us, but ultimately to the ever-present mercy which guides his decision in the first place. God should always be thanked for his loyal love toward us in the midst of our dishonorable experiences, our failures, and even downright disobedience. In verses 4 and 5, the people of God wonder and they cannot find shelter or food in their own effort, even though they have tried on their own. It wasn't until they cried aloud to God that they found shelter in a city for them, thus leading to the idea of dependence on God rather than depending on their own strength. When we as Christians spiritually wander and stray from the Lord, we in the same way naturally move away from our provision and our safe place. But trials and unfortunate situations are going to happen in our lives. In James 1, he reminds us that part of our journey we're on is meant to refine us. Psalm 107 contains words and phrases like wasteland, hunger and thirsty, distress, and even iron chains. However, these are the very things that made these people of God so thankful for his intervention when they cried out for help. God's people wandered in the wilderness becoming homeless, hungry, and on the verge of death. And when they became housed and fed, both physically and spiritually, they were likely able to look back to a time when they had nothing. Do you take the time or your home you live in even for granted? When's the last time you thank the Lord for everyday necessities in your life, like your home, your bed, or food? Pre-COVID memories may be fading, but remember the time just prior to February of this year. Eating out, no problem. Vacations to the destinations and timing of your choice, no problem. Weddings, graduations, church, and funerals once occurred without little thought. But we assumed these options in our lives would remain in our control. Tony Evans says that giving thanks in, not for, is the secret to our victory. We are told in Scripture, in everything give thanks. It is a decree from God recorded by Paul. It is a divine expectation. The psalmist says it's good to give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Psalm 103, 1 through 5 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, that all is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, and who satisfies your years with good things, so that our youth is renewed like that of an eagle. 
God has given us ample reasons to thank him. In fact, the Bible goes so as far to say that it is evil not to thank God. Paul says in Romans 1, 21, that unrighteous men did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. You see, God is the entity that is most taken for granted in the universe. There's absolutely nothing we can do that is not dependent on him. Every breath we take depends on him to provide oxygen as well as to make our lungs work. Everything we have is supplied by a source beyond ourselves. The money in our wallets was printed from paper, from trees that God made in the ground that he owns. The cars we drive were fitted together from the metal that God placed in the earth. The gold jewelry we wear around our necks or wrists or fingers is from a deposit God provided. Scripture says over and over that God is the source of all good things, so we know he doesn't want us to forget that, that he gave us everything we have, and it's all his. Yet we are all a bit ungrateful at times, unhappy with what we have and wanting more of what we don't have. These attitudes prevent us from focusing on God's graciousness. As I get older in life, I realize how many things that I take for granted that I don't take for granted as much anymore. Some of you may be in the same boat with me. You may be joining that group of us who are aging faster than we thought we ever would. Some of you may not be there just yet, but hang on. You will be. We forget to be thankful for what we have when we take it for granted God says to give thanks in everything. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to give thanks for everything. You don't need to give thanks for that bad day or for that bad relationship or being passed over at work or a financial hardship. Whatever it is, you are not to give thanks for the difficulties but rather in the difficulties. It's an important distinction, and one I think we often miss. Giving thanks in everything shows us a heart of faith that God is bigger than the difficulties and that he can use them. And if we approach him with the right heart and spirit for the good and his glory. It's hard to give thanks for everything, and because it is, we often skip over it. But when you realize that you're not called to give thanks for everything, but rather in everything, you are on your way to living the victorious Christian life. God's merciful, but we are expected to do our part. Did you run the video? Lord, please look down and recognize us, poor sinner. Please, Lord, I just want to see my daughters again. I've been separated from my family for so long. I know I've been guilty of pride and sharp dealing. I'm sorry that I turned my back on you, Lord. Forgive me. And help us, Lord, for the sake of my family, for Tommy's sake, and for Delmer's and Pete's. Let me see my daughters again, Lord. Help us, please.
Sometimes we bring hard circumstances on ourselves due to our own rebellion and willful disobedience, just like the people of God in verses 10 through 14. In this clip from O Brother, Where Art Thou?, Everett and his friends are about to be hung and die. And before the warden hangs them, Everett begins to pray that God deliver them and to give them one more chance. Yet later on, he goes back to his religious skepticism. This demonstrates how we shouldn't take God's mercy for granted and resort, resort back to our rebellious ways after he has delivered us from our own mess that we brought upon ourselves. We should be thankful to him that he continues to deliver us. Now, there's another story about a very beautiful lady. Her name was Cinderella. But Cinderella was made to feel ugly. She lived with a wicked stepmother and two equally wicked sisters. Cinderella was made to live as a slave. Now, she was beautiful, and she didn't feel beautiful. She didn't think about herself as beautiful because she was influenced by a wicked environment that put her down, reduced her to nothing. The problem with Cinderella was that she was stuck there. She was locked in the situation for a long time. She could not get out. You've heard the story. You know about the ball, and through a series of miraculous interventions, she was transported to the ball in a chariot. And then she met a prince, and the prince saw Cinderella, and he loved her. The problem in this story, as you know, is that the clock struck midnight. And when the clock hit midnight, she reverted back to her old self. She became a slave again to an evil stepmother and two evil stepsisters. The good part of the Cinderella story, though, is that the prince never forgot her. Even though there had been a lot of people at the ball, there was something about her that made her stand out from the crowd. She was special. She was unique. She was rare. And everyone wanted the prince, but the prince wanted Cinderella. Suppose Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella had given up and developed the same thankless attitude as her stepmother and sisters. Suppose she had resolved to stay locked away in a cold, darkened room. Bitter, never seeking something more. What if she had never asked or accepted help? You see, a lot of us have had our blessings come through to us because have not had our blessings come through to us because we've forgotten to be thankful. We've counted the years where it seems that our prayers have not been answered and we have determined that there is little to be thankful for. Too many times we missed out on a destiny of, that God has for us because we've stopped acknowledging him. We've stopped being thankful. Yet what I want to remind us today is that there is always hope in the mindset of thankfulness. That sometimes God allows situations in our lives that are beyond our power to fix so that we will experience him in the midst of that scenario. At times, God will let you hit rock bottom so that you can discover that he is the rock at the bottom. Let me say that again. God will let you hit rock bottom so that you can discover that he is the rock at the bottom. If you put your hope and faith in him, I promise that you will not be disappointed. You see, life brings about many different types of distress, whether out of our hands or self-inflicted. Yet God brings us out of all of them when we call out to him. Our calling out is an acknowledgement of our reliance. 
We cannot get ourselves out of situations alone in our own strength. Thus, we should thank the Lord for his merciful rescue. God restores our needs when we acknowledge our dependence on him. If hunger brings us to our knees, it is more useful to us than the biggest meal. If thirst drives us to the living water of Christ, it is better than the deepest droughts of worldly joys. And if fainting leads to crying, it is better than the strength of the mighty. And he delivered them out of their distresses. For the Lord was always ready to save them. And the Lord delights to come in when no one else can deliver. The good part of Cinderella's story is that the prince never forgot her. And even though there had been a lot of people at the ball, there was something about her that made her stand out in the crowd. She was special. She was unique. She was rare. Everyone wanted the prince, but the prince wanted Cinderella. And God wants each of you more. You see, a lot of people today are living like Cinderella. They're influenced by a wicked stepmother, the devil, who's got two wicked daughters, the world and the flesh. Living as slaves in a hostage situation, many individuals feel they have little to be thankful for, or perhaps they've forgotten. Perhaps this describes you in some way. Maybe you thought you would be further along than you are right now. Maybe you had a brighter dream for how your family would be, or your career, or relationships, all of it. Maybe you even met the Prince of Peace, and he saved you some time ago. But you found yourself living again on your terms, not his. You see, it's easy to lose heart when you see no end in sight to what appears to be a thankless situation with no hope of turning things around. But what I want to remind you of today is that there is plenty to be thankful and hopeful for. Jesus knows right where you are, and he knows how long you've been there. God doesn't want just to bring you his money, his castle to you, or his chariot. He wants to take you out of bondage that you feel and let you live in the freedom of his presence and his provision. He wants to show you your new position, your new glory, and your new hope. He wants to get you out of a spirit of slavery. He just doesn't want to buy you new clothes, new shoes, or a new car so that you thank him. He wants to give you a new hope. And in that, you can be thankful. You can thank God in every circumstance because God is in control. He can bring good out of evil. He can turn around the worst mistakes you've made. No matter what happens, God isn't going to stop loving you. You can find a hundred things to be thankful for in any circumstance, even when the circumstance stinks and may even be painful. I charge you, to have radical thankfulness, being thankful in all circumstances because it's God's will and it creates fellowship and it creates a reliance on him. What do I mean by that? Well, thankfulness and gratitude always build a deeper relationship between you and other people and between you and God. If you want to get closer to someone, start with a thankful attitude toward that person. If you're feeling distance from your spouse, you need to start doing what you did when you were dating. Express gratitude. Write little notes of kindness and encouragement. Make calls or texts during the day just to tell them that you're thankful. The reason maybe you've lost that love and feeling is because you stopped doing the things that created that loving feeling early on. And you take each other for granted, just like we do our Father in heaven. But when we're exhausted from the hard circumstances of life, we must depend on God's unending mercy 
and not our own strength. We must develop a song of thankfulness in everything because it's God's plan for us. He's offered us so much more mercy than we deserve. Be thankful in all things. Take your needs to him in prayer. For our God is in the mercy business. And he will never fail. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for all of the things that you put in my life this week. Certainly all the things in my life this week would be difficult to pray for. But by being in those situations, you cause growth and you cause a closeness and a reliance and a gratitude on you like no other. My prayer for your people this morning who hear this message is that they step back and take an opportunity to be in the moment and to pray in the moment and to be thankful in the moment. Help us to rely on you. We thank you and we love you and we ask for your forgiveness for all that we, the times when we forget to thank you. For it's in your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. This being the first Sunday of the month, it is the time in which we take the opportunity to come to the Lord's table. The Lord's Supper is part of the worship of God's people, and for that reason it should be celebrated ordinarily as part of our regular worship time. I would ask for those of you who are watching and listening from home, that you would gather your elements, your, your cups, your juice and crackers or juice and bread that you might have available as we prepare for Holy Communion. Since this is not the table of any one church, but is the table of the Lord, any member of any branch of Christian churches who truly and sincerely repent of their sins and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, are invited to join us. Draw near with faith and let us take this sacrament to our comfort. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread And when he had blessed it and broken it, he gave it to his disciples. As I give this bread to you in his name, saying, take, eat it. This is my body, which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Join with me in taking the body of Christ. After the same manner, our Savior took the cup. And having given thanks, as has been done in his name, he gave it to the disciples, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I offer you the cup of salvation. Please join me by taking the cup. Please pray with me. Praise to God 
for his mighty work of healing and his sustaining care. To Christ for his work of redemption and the gift of the sacrament. To the Holy Spirit for his power and encouragement that he might use the bread and wine to nourish and sustain God's people gathered at the table. Dear Lord, we pray for your forgiveness. We pray for your mercy. We thank you for the sacrifice of your Son. Guide your people to do your will, not ours. Let us pray as our Father taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is normally a time, at least pre-COVID, that we would collect our tithes and offerings. We pray that you will continue to support God's mission and God's church by not neglecting this really important opportunity that we have to worship. Pray with me now as we bless the tithes and offerings as they come into our church for God's use. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these tithes and offerings that have been and will be given for use here in your church at Faith Presbyterian in Quincy, Illinois, that we would support such things that you would have us to support. You would guide us in our path to lift you up in all things and share with all people. Guide us. Guide our use of our funds. And we pray that we keep you as head of our church family in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have prayers for our people this morning. I know that um, Dion Detoit, uh, the Campos family, is not doing well and is near the end of life as has been communicated to us by the family. We just pray that you be with that family. I know there was another prayer concern, and it's escaped my mind right at the moment. But you know who they are, and I just pray that we lift those up. I know that we had, uh, we had a recent death, and uh, I just pray, Lord, that you be with that family. Former church member that we've had, um, dear Lord, I pray that you be with the Kavitli family, a local optometrist here in the community that passed away this past week. We pray that you be with them in that hardship and that difficult time. For those who are sick from COVID, from those who care for those who have it, we pray that you lift them up. So let's pray for our people this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I lift all of these up, those are, that have been spoken, those who are in my mind and my heart, I pray that uh, for all those who need you, that they cry out, that they offer prayer to you and ask you for what they need. We pray for those who are experiencing COVID, which we're all experiencing the impact of it, but we just pray for those who are sick, those who are ill, those who are in the hospitals, those who care for those people who are ill. We just pray that you rid this terrible disease from our community, from our city, from our country, from the world. Lord, we have lots going on right now in our, in our country. We have a bit of division because we have an election coming up next week, and I just pray that you be with the people of this country, that they would exercise their opportunity to have a voice. We just pray that whatever the outcome, Lord, that you're in it and that you will lead us to a better place. 
be with those who are hurting, be with those who are sick, be with those who have lost loved ones, be with those who are lonely, those who are just feeling a bit thankless today, not feeling that they have anything to be thankful for. Touch them. Let them know that they are unique, they're special, and that you love them. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Um, as far as announcements go, I uh, just want to uh, remember these red and green shoe boxes uh, that we still have to fill up. So if you haven't filled those up, please do and get those back. It's a great, great opportunity to, uh, to share your love and God's love with children who don't have enough. We'll uh, keep you posted in regard to our services. I would hope that we could come back together uh, under our previous guidelines soon. Continue to pray for your session. Continue to pray for our church as we continue to move forward as God would have us to move. We thank you for your patience. We hope to be together soon. Let this be your benediction this morning as we prepare to depart. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. May God bless your week in all that you do. Amen.